Dear students, you are watching now the second chapter of the SCA demonstration videos. In this video I'd like to talk about the internal base of the skull. The internal base of the skull is uh, a part of the neurocranium and uh, in the first uh, episode uh, from the calvaria I told you what are the bones building the calvaria but now I'd like to tell you again uh, these components of the neurocranium. So here you can see the frontal bone, this is unpaired. Here is the squama of the temporal bone. There you can see the greater ring of the sphenoidal. This is the parietal bone. The occipital bone is here. But after I remove the calvaria, Took not so long time now. You can see here almost the whole sphenoid, the bone, and this small part here is the cribriform plate of the ethmoidal bone. Later I am going to talk about the details of this. Now let's look at the internal base of the skull. This is uh, where you can see it and uh, if I turn it a little bit and if you look into it you can see that the internal base of the skull or the structures of the internal base of the skull are not in the same plane. These are like stairs, that's why it is called in Latin scala or you can use another name which is fossa. Um, the internal base of the skull so we can divide into three uh, fossae or three scalas. This is the anterior cranial fossa, where you can find the frontal lobe of the brain. Here you can see the middle cranial fossa. There you can find the temporal lobe of the brain. And here is the posterior cranial fossa. Well, there you can find the cerebellum. So let's take a look at the borders of this fossa. The anterior cranial fossa is surrounded by the squama of the frontal bone. So here you can see the squama of the frontal bone. The scala means scale of a fish. And at the posterior part you can see the posterior margin of the lesser ring of the sphenoid and this is the chiasmatic groove on the body of the sphenoid. The middle cranial fossa is here. The anterior border is the same as the posterior border of the anterior cranial fossa. So again, the lesser ring of the sphenoidal bone and the chiasmatic Sulcus, groove means sulcus in Latin. And uh, the posterior border is partly the upper margin of the anterior surface of the pyramid. The pyramid, um, or petrosa part of the temporal bone, is here. So again, the anterior surface and the dorsum sali. This is here. the dorsum sali. And let's go further. So what are the surrounding bony parts of the posterior cranial fossa? The anterior surface is the posterior surface of the pyramid here and the dorsum sali and the squama of the occipital bone is at its back and there we can see a groove. This is the groove for the transverse sinus. So now I would like to show you the different structures in the anterior cranial fossa and I add the structures passing through these holes. So the junctions of the anterior cranial 
fossa. Here you can see the cribriform plate, or in Latin, lamina cribrosa. In this model, it is not so good visible what cribriform means, but if I show you this plastic skull, you can see the small holes. This plate is perforated, and the structures passing through are the olfactory phyla, phyla, and there is an artery and a nerve, the anterior ethmoidal nerve and the anterior ethmoidal artery. These are coming from the orbita, and then the artery has a loop here, and then after it gives the anterior meningeal arteries, it goes downward and ends in the nasal cavity. So the anterior ethmoidal artery supplies not only this part of the dura mater, then the upper part of the nasal cavity. We can see here the groove, um, of the, uh, the chiasmatic groove with the optic chiasma. And then you can see here at the uh, medial part of the lesser ring of the sphenoid, this small process, this is the anterior, anterior clinoid process. These impressions are the uh, uh, are caused by the gyri of the frontal lobe. Now let's go into So let's go into the middle cranial fossa. In the middle cranial fossa you find more structures. We are going to start with the fissure, what you can see between the greater and the lesser rings of the sphenoid bone. This is here, it is called a superior orbital fissure. The Latin name is fissura orbitalis superior. And this one, I mean this fissure, connects the middle cranial fossa with the orbita. From the orbital side you can see the superior orbital fissure here. What do you find in the superior orbital fissure? So here you can find cranial nerves and the vein. What are these cranial nerves? You find here the third cranial nerve, the oculomotor, the fourth, the trochlear, the first branch of the fifth, which uh, is actually the trigeminal nerve, so the first branch of the trigeminal nerve is the ophthalmic nerve. This is a pure sensory, somatosensory nerve of the trigeminal. Here you can see the sixth cranial nerve, the abducens, and the vein is called superior ophthalmic vein. The superior ophthalmic vein connects an external vein of the skull, which is called angular vein, at its part of the skull, uh, or the face, and the superior ophthalmic vein opens into the cavernous sinus. The cavernous sinus is a venous space, uh, which, uh, which wall, its wall is made by the dura mater. So let's see the next one. The next hole is a round hole. That's why it's called foramen rotundum. The foramen rotundum is a connection between the pterygopalatine fossa and the middle uh, fossa, mi middle cranial fossa. Here you can find the maxillary nerve. This is the second branch of the trigeminal and it is also pure somatosensory. This hole is called foramen ovale, uh, but its shape is not so oval in this model, so you can understand with this better why is it called foramen ovale. And in the foramen ovale, you find the mandibular nerve. The mandibular nerve is the third branch of the trigeminal. It contains somatosensory and somatomotor uh, nerve fibers. Laterally from the foramen ovale, 
you can see here the foramen spinosum. The foramen spinosum contains the middle meningeal artery. Uh, previously I already told that this artery is the main supply of the dura mater. So after it enters into the middle cranial fossa, it goes upward and then it forms these impressions which are called uh, arterial grooves. The middle meningeal artery is located in the epidural space. Medially from the foramen ovale, between the body of the sphenoid, the pyramidal bone, uh, you can see there, the foramen lacerum. The foramen lacerum is a kind of junction of the skull which is completely closed uh, with, with cartilage um, in a living person. But we find here two nerves, the greater and the lesser petrosal nerve. The greater petrosal nerve is a branch, a preganglionic parasympathetic visceral motor branch of the facial nerve, and the lesser petrosal nerve is a preganglionic parasympathetic visceral motor branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve. So this is an opening to the external base of the skull. In the middle of the of this of the middle scala you see here as I said the chiasmatic groove and laterally from the chiasmatic groove eh, you can see the optic canal. The optic canal is a connection between the orbita and this part of the internal base. So from the orbital side there you can see the optic canal what does it contain? It contains the optic nerve, this is the second cranial nerve, and an artery which is called ophthalmic artery. The ophthalmic artery is the branch of the internal carotid artery. I've already showed the uh, anterior clinical process which is here, and on the opposite side you can see the posterior clinical process between these two processes you find a duplication of the dura mater, which is called uh, diaphragma cellae. Here you can see the hypophysial fossa and the dorsum cellae. The dorsum cellae and the hypophysial fossa, so they, they form together the Turkish saddle. Uh, in the Turkish saddle you find the hypophysis, the pituitary gland. There is an oblique canal, I need the other skull. To show it again, here, so posteriorly and laterally from the foramen lacerum, this is the foramen lacerum, and the canal I'd like to show is here, it's called carotid canal, in the carotid canal you find the internal carotid artery, this canal is slightly S shaped, it's like a letter S, and uh, besides the and, and together with the uh, internal carotid artery you find the carotid plexus which contains postganglionic sympathetic nerve fibers. Here on the upper edge of the pyramid you see uh, hi hiatus uh, of the greater petrosal and lesser petrosal nerve they contain the, the same and there's like um, the greater petrosal and the lesser petrosal nerve and from medial to lateral so from here to there I can show you an impression first this is the trigeminal impression with the trigeminal ganglion this is the sensory ganglion of the trigeminal nerve the next part is the hiatus and groove for the greater and lesser petrosal nerve with the greater and lesser petrosal nerves. The next part here is the arcuate eminence and the most lateral part of the pyramid that I can show you here with my index finger this is the tegmen this is the tegmen tympani 
the roof of the tympanic cavity. So under this bone we can find the tympanic cavity. As a border, posterior border of the middle cranial fossa, we can see here the groove for the superior petrosal sinus. The sinus is again a venous space filled with venous blood and the wall is made by the dura mater. Between the pyramid and the sphenoid bone, the sphenopetrosal synchondrosis. Is visible. Okay, so let's see the last part of the internal base of the skull. This is the posterior cranial fossa, what you can find here. Uh, first, uh, you can see here between the dorsum sali and the basilary part of the occipital bone, the sphenooccipital synchondrosis. And here, the red line shows the petrooccipital synchondrosis. Medially from the synchondrosis, you can see the groove for the inferior petrosal sinus, which is the sibling of the superior petrosal sinus. And if you go in this direction and you turn the skull, you can see the groove for the sigmoidal sinus and then the back you see the groove for the transverse sinus, which goes and fuses together with the superior sagittal sinus here uh, into the confluence senum. But this bony part is called um, internal occipital protuberance. And underneath you can find the occipital crest. Let's see the junctions. This eight or heart-shaped hole is called the jugular foramen. And the jugular foramen has an intrajugular process, this small bony crest, which divides the foramen into two small parts. The medial part contains nerves like the uh, glossopharyngeal nerve, this is the ninth cranial nerve, the vagus or vagus, this is the tenth, and the accessory nerve, the eleventh cranial nerve. On the lateral part of the jugular foramen you can see the internal jugular vein and this is a connection between the external base of the skull So you can see the jugular foramen from the other side here. here. Another canal or junction is called hypoglossal canal, which is here, but unfortunately with this skull it's not so easy to show. So in order to see it better, we have to cut the skull into two halves, like this. And I can show you the hypoglossal canal here better. In the hypoglossal canal, you find the last cranial nerve, the 12th, this is the hypoglossal nerve. So back to the whole skull. In the middle of the posterior cranial fossa, you see the foramen magnum, and the foramen magnum contains the spinal cord, the two vertebral arteries, the anterior and the two uh, posterior spinal arteries. You can see inside of this the internal and partially external vertebral venous plexus. And of course the meninges, uh, they follow the transition between the spinal cord and the medulla oblongata. And there you can find the so-called spinal roots of the accessory nerve. So just to memorize, the foramen magnum doesn't contain the esophagus. So if I turn the skull, you can see the bottom and the posterior part of the posterior cranial fossa better, where you can see here the cerebellar fossa, 
again the internal occipital protuberance uh, there you can see a part of the cerebral fossa with my finger I can touch here the groove for the transverse sinus which leads into the groove for the sigmoid sinus that ends at the lateral part of the jugular foramen, so there. And a couple of smaller parts on the posterior um, part of the posterior surface of the pyramid. You can see here the aperture of the ex, uh, the, the the aperture of the um, aqueduct, uh, or vestibular aqueduct, there, uh, which is a connection between this fossa and the inner ear. It contains the paralympha, and this hole is called internal acoustic meatus. Uh, the opening of the internal acoustic meatus is the internal acoustic pore, porus which contains the seventh cranial nerve, the facial nerve, the vestibular cochlear nerve, and the labyrinth artery. So, it was the internal base of the skull with the three scalas and the junctions and structures passing through. Thank you for your attention.